Hello, it is Saturday, July 2nd, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Um, it's a themeless puzzle today, the Saturday puzzle, so the second of the two themeless puzzles for the week. Could be a very tricky puzzle, although hopefully not as tricky as my recording of yesterday's puzzle ended up being due to my self-sabotage leading to uh, a re-recording. That is definitely not happening. I can see that this video is recording perfectly fine. So this uh, perfectly fine edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Trash Snack, Bradley Pirtle, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the inimitable Connor O'Neill, and joining us this month for her birthday month of July, the infallible Cynthia Toms, courtesy of her boyfriend, Andrew. So welcome for July, Cynthia Toms, as a um, a birthday supreme benefactor. And with that, let's, well, I will quickly, I suppose, thank the rest of the patrons of the Patreon campaign. Thank you to everybody who has um, supported this channel directly. I do very much appreciate it. It's what it's what keeps this sustainable. And if you become such a person, such a patron, you can get all of the Daily Solve bonus videos that have gone up on the Patreon to date and the new ones that go up each week, such as yesterday's latest um, speed solve of mini puzzles from the past week. And of course it's July, so that means there's a July monthly bonus puzzle from the New York Times that I will have to solve for patrons. So I will get to that, maybe I'll get to that this very weekend. Look out for that. And I know I have more Constructor's Corner puzzles to solve that were left unsolved from my last attempt. Anyway, do subscribe to the channel as well uh, if you are um, interested in watching more of these. And let's get on to the puzzle itself. This is a crossword, a themeless Saturday crossword constructed by Evan Kalish, who I believe has constructed 18. I think this is his 18th crossword for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's start solving. Painting that inspired an iconic Home Alone movie poster. Oh, I never really thought about this before, but it must be the scream, the image of... Um, the character from the film sort of screaming with his hands on his face. I always thought that was such a funny, iconic image for that film because it occurs, it occurs because he puts aftershave on his face and it stings. But of course it became the iconic image as though he's sort of frightened of the, the, the burglars who are attempting to break into his home. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, let's keep going. Big hit. Uh, you know, timpani hit? I don't think that's right. Direction could be a heading on a, um, I don't know, a ship or something. Old flame could be an ex-lover, maybe. Let's put that in and see if it if it bears up. Carrying on, a whole carrying on, a whole ado. That looks right. Sugar cubes, e.g. I'm not sure. Certain Australian boomers, male, and flyers, female. Wallabies? There we go. That must be it. All right. Boomers and flyers. Big hit. So what is this? Sorry. This was probably very clear. And here we have comedian Volcano of Impractical Jokers. I have no idea. Comedian Volcano. Is that someone's name? Volcano? Something USA may be part of. And image problem. Add or subtract, say, edit. Oh, wallabies with an I, sorry. Wall wallaby would be singular spelled this way and plural I-E-S. Sorry, that was silly. So add or subtract is to edit from text, for instance. Make in math. Could be R as in five and three, R8, five and three, make eight. I wonder if that's what, that's, what that wants. Something kept in a Hollywood archive. A master reel master f the master film reel of a of a archived film that must be it okay let's see uh here we have wing blank and here we have south asian toddy cats i don't know what a toddy cat is but it probably ends with an s because it's plural and what about down here who blank
Hmm. I don't know. And early 21st century crisis with thee is the great, not the Great Depression. Oh, that's surprising. Um, or maybe this isn't master real. Maybe it's something else. Because this really, no, it's not the Great Depression. Oh. Oh, sorry. Early 21st century. I was thinking of the 20th century. The Great Recession. So, sorry, that was very, that was very silly. Um, but this still wouldn't be master real in that case. Master cuts. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Let's check the crosses from Great Recession. Roke for source. Is that from a U? Is that from a? Is that a goat's cheese? Or a sheep's cheese? I should say. Sorry. Um, maybe. Who? Oh, who knew? Yes, must be. It must be a sheep's cheese. Okay. And big hit. Oh, a thwack. I see. Right. I was trying to think of a big hit, big successful song or film or something, but uh, but no. So sugar cubes. Oh, interesting. So this is this is the three dimensional shape that they are. Is that the case? Why are they not simply cubes? There must be a word. There must be a geometric word with which I'm not particularly familiar, or perhaps not at all familiar. This looks like sal, sal volcano. Um, I can't really think of anything else that would fit here. And that looks right with hexa. Okay. Um, oh, civets. Oh, right. Those are little cats. They're sort of uh, like, look like a lynx or something like that. Okay. So that's toddy cats, whatever that means. And something... USA may be part of it. It's interesting that it's not something the USA or the US may be part of, but specifically USA, the actual acronym itself, the letters. Now, what does that mean? Coast? I don't know. And image problem. Image problem with a question mark. So what does it mean that there's a question mark? It's some kind of pun or wordplay. And is it image or is it problem? That's the, uh, it's image, presumably. That is the um, the pun. Sorry, the I should have said this specifically. The question mark indicates some kind of pun or wordplay. And the reason I'm sort of lingering on this is because I don't have anything other, any other information to get inside of this sort of part of the grid. So I'm just kind of lingering here and blathering in the hope that I think of something. Uh, this is not very entertaining, probably. Something USA may be part of. So maybe I should stop looking at these. Sugar cubes, e.g., would be hexahedra, I guess. Hexahe oh, hexahedron. Is that is that the sort of geometric technical term for a cube or something. I mean, it makes sense. The hexa would be six sides. Like a dodecahedron, the, the, the hedron or hedra would be the plural. You do have that format. So that, that probably is right. So, oh, image problem is a rebus. <laughs> is it a rebus? I think it is. And then wing nut and USA may be part of a chant. Okay. That all adds up. Sorry, that took me so incredibly long. Um, so an image problem is a rebus. That's very funny. I'm not conditioned to think of rebuses as images, even though in puzzle solving, that's generally what they are. So when in, in puzzle solving beyond the New York Times crossword, a rebus generally refers to something pictorial or pictographic standing in for a word of some kind. So you might have a, um, an illustration of a human eye that serves as the letter I, for instance. That's an incredibly ordinary sort of rebus. Of course, in the New York Times crossword, um, a rebus is when you put several letters into a grid, such as rebus, into this one cell. Uh, so I am conditioned to think of it that way. But anyway, I guess an image problem would be a rebus. And then here we have wingnut and USA being part of the chant. All right, let's move on. Sorry that took so long. Needlework, verb, or noun? Um... I don't know, tat or something? Is that anything? I have no idea. 
discreet attention getter could be sort of pst. And locale for a power wash and part of a fraction. I'm wondering if this pst is actually correct. It could be a hem, actually. 1950s to 70s war locale. Um, and Tony winning actress Stroker. Hmm. Not thrilled with either pst or a hem with these crosses, but let's keep looking. Bathing suit, portmanteau, probably something keeny. Mankini, maybe? Um, there are just several of those sorts of portmanteaus, so that's my guess. Word with mess or press? Kit? Press kit? Mess kit? I think that must be right. And auction series would be a bids, bids, a series of bids in an auction. Uh, here we have bas relief, a map showing uh, elevation physically. And Warner, well, I guess it doesn't need to be a map, but uh, it could be other things as well. Uh, but as an example of bas relief, anyway, word on a cornerstone. Uh, Anna would be the year. And don't ask me again, I said no. Don't ask me again. Verbal equivalent of picking up the gauntlet. Something it's on, oh, it's on maybe? Picking up the gauntlet, so responding to it, uh, to a challenge in the affirmative. Locale for a power wash, hmm. And part of a fraction. Part of a fraction. Hmm, I keep thinking numerator and denominator, but is there something, I'm probably thinking about this the wrong way entirely. Oh, this is Sinai, 1950s to 70s war, war, war locale. Sorry about that. Okay, so then pst is indeed the discrete attention getter, I suppose, or at least it seems like it probably is. Oh, a slash is part of a fraction. Yes, I was thinking about it the wrong way. I should have been thinking uh, more literally and, and sort of visually, I guess. Locale for a power wash is a patio, maybe? You power wash something out on a patio, and Ali Stroker must be a Tony-winning actress. I hope that's right. And a tankini is a board, bathing suit port pento. There we go, exactly. Just the kind of thing I was thinking of, but I didn't jump to it immediately. So this does look like needlework verb or noun could be tat. Okay, I think tatting, I have heard of that in terms of doing needlework. So I think that's I think that's correct. Certain hydrocarbon. I'm suspect it'll end in an E and an N-E, sort of een. But I don't know, so maybe I won't put it in. Tick or talk. And come together could be to wed. Two things literally to unite. Try to get through intuition. Mm, I don't know, maybe I'll delete this for now. Come together. Couldn't be met because that's, that's uh, past tense. Commercial mascot with floppy ears. Uh, one would think there would be many of those, wouldn't you? Code for the primary hub of Delta Airlines. I think Delta Airlines' primary hub is Atlanta uh, International Airport, so ATL is probably, I think is probably it. Some pieces in a bucket. Oh, maybe a bucket of chicken thighs? And choice words this or that or something choice word choice words hmm hannah gatsby's nanette or hassan minaj's homecoming king those are comedy specials or stand-up specials right neither of those really looks like it fits with this li why so it ends with special uh does that work? Master, oh, master copy of a film. Right, sorry. Okay, and this does look like it probably ends with een. I'm still not going to put it in just yet. Tick or talk. Oh, a sec, a second. Oh, that's sort of funny. Um, So one tick or talk of a clock is a second. It's interesting that it's sec abbreviated, though. There isn't really explicitly an indication of an abbreviation in, in the clue. Maybe the fact that it's sort of a jokey sort of thing, tick or talk. 
may, means the answer will be casual. I'm not sure. Lagunitas offering. Lagunitas um, Brewery sells an India Pale Ale, an IPA beer. And some CDC spots. CDC is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, I think. So what is the, what are some of their spots? Probably ends in an S. I'm not sure. In a saddle, say. Astride a horse? I don't know. Is that? Um, it doesn't really seem very good. What would start with an A that means in a saddle? What about this? Succinct. And then here we have looking like rain. It could be gray out. Um, could spell this with an E or an A. I'm guessing it will be an A here. Try to get through intuition. Some. No. Hmm. High blank. High ho? High. I do think this is thighs, probably. And here we have port letters. It could be a USB port, maybe, with that S in the middle. Click and ship organization. Not sure, but in four letters, a major shipping organization is the United States Postal Service. So it could be the USPS. I'm not, not familiar with click and ship, but that could be. Sayonara could be adios, another way to say good, good, goodbye in a, in a non-English language. And assign new keyboard shortcuts to, could be to remap um, keys on a keyboard. Wine barrel wood is definitely oak, most commonly. And pioneers trip west, e.g. I suppose you could consider them treks. So that fits well. Decorative painting on an airplane fuselage. Body art or wing art, body art more likely. I'm not really very confident, so let's check the crosses. Verb whose past tense form is an anagram of its present tense. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not really convinced that's body art, though. Hot, and here we have like some defenses. Let's look at these downs. Aid for going paperless. An e-reader, maybe? To read books without hard copies? Mid-April in the U.S. is tax time. All right, so this should be easier now. Verb whose past tense form is an anagram of its present tense. Um, well, there shouldn't be very many options, should there? So this this one will be a present tense verb. Eat, yes, eat, because eat and ate are anagrams of one another. Great, all right. So this was neither wing art nor body art. Didn't think it was wing art, but it's not body either. Hot could be sexy, perhaps, and like some defenses... Oh, nose art? Right. That's probably the case. Oral defenses? Ah, right, an oral defense of a, um, a, a doctoral thesis or something. And then be feasible as a proposal. Is to, oh, that, that won't fly or that will fly. Oh, these are Netflix specials in particular. Wow. I wouldn't have gotten, I wouldn't have necessarily known these were specific to Netflix. So I'm not surprised I didn't get that. I, I'm sure that's the first time Netflix special has appeared in the New York Times crossword. I would be absolutely shocked if that weren't the case. Commercial mascot with floppy ears. Oh, Trix Rabbit. I sort of remember that. Um, so what was this high hat? Oh, maybe high hat is in the um, sort of double symbol used on a drum, drum standard drum kit. And choice words. This one. Oh, right. Okay. I was trying to think of words you'd say when making a choice, whereas this is the, well, sorry, when deliberating the choice more accurately, whereas this is the what you'd say when you've actually made the choice, this one. So I was just thinking about it too narrowly. I haven't, I haven't really mentioned that very much recently, but do go out of your way not to think of clues in that very narrow sense. Certain hydro hydrocarbon. Well, it turned out it was Ian after all. I was right about that. And to come together, could it be wed? Try to get through intuition. W doesn't look very good here, does it? Oh, guess at. Oh, gel has come together. Oh, we never looked at this. Bosporus resident. Why didn't I ever look at that? Turk. Um, Alkene. And then, uh, in a saddle, say, succinct. Saya for a katana. Is it the sheath of a katana? I'm sort of just guessing based on the S, but that aren't very many 
parts of a katana, right? It's just a sword, so it's not going to have a huge number of things. SNL alum Rachel, no idea. And that reminds me, singer Reese. Not sure. Della Reese was a singer? It would fit in five letters, but I have no idea if that is correct. Is flabbergasted? We'll probably end with an S. What about this? In a saddle, say. So what did I think? I thought maybe a stride, a stride a horse. Let's see if that bears up at all now that we have sheath. Some CD speed, some CDC spots. Oh, ad spots on television, public service announcements. That's what that's getting at. Spots meaning uh, television ad spots. Okay. Don't know the SNL alum. Tobiko or Masago? Oh, are those forms of roe fish eggs? I bet they are. And competitor in the Prix de Lausanne. Uh, I don't know. What it's a it's a race of some sort, one assumes. Uh but I don't know what kind. Uh see, told you. I something did. I nailed it. I called it. I called it seems better for C told you. But let's check the crosses. Game a stride is actually looking pretty good. I'm sort of surprised. Uh but anyway, let's let's go back to this. Game one starter, typically. Uh I'm not sure what that wants. Plant that symbolized purity in ancient Egypt. Oh, interesting. Um, I'm not sure. I wish I knew that offhand. It's annoying to me that I don't, but I don't seem to. Oh, maybe this is Della Reese. We have an L there. A uh, campus with a landmark statue of Will Rogers on his horse, Soap Suds. Um, I don't know. It could end in tech. Some schools end in tech. Uh... Oh, succinct is laconic. Oh, look at that. I'm kind of surprised that worked. Um, and then, oh, this looks like ballerina. Oh, maybe it isn't a race. I guess it's not. Sorry. <laughs> Competitor in the Prix de Lausanne. I'll have to look that up. And then here we have through working. Oh, you're through working. You're done working. You're retired. All right. So it did end in tech. Look at that. Oh, Texas tech. It must be. And then game one starter, typically ace does that mean? Sorry, I don't know what that means. I'm such an idiot when it comes to sports. It's really embarrassing. Oh, flax. Yes, of course. Flax symbolized purity in ancient Egypt. I really should have gotten that earlier, but I didn't. So what can you do? Take in charge is fed? Take in, I've taken charge. I've, I don't know. Is flabbergasted. Reels. So, to, oh, to, oh, I see, <laughs> right. It's not taken charge as an adjective, as in, or, or a verb, I guess. Uh, I've taken charge, I've done this. But rather, uh, it's, um, it's a noun. It's a charge that is taken, a taken charge. Wow, no wonder I didn't get that. Uh, that's funny. And if you're flabbergasted, you're real, you're reals. And so SNL alum must be Rachel Dratch. I don't think I know the name, but that's fine. There we go. All right, we solved the Saturday puzzle in, um, I don't know, 21 minutes, I guess. I don't know why I said that. I usually don't point that out, but that's how long it took today. And um, I don't know. I guess I thought it was sort of, it's funny. It was sort of similarly difficult for me for yesterday's puzzle in that I had just sort of a couple areas that really stuck around and gave me some trouble. I mean, there were some clues that gave me trouble throughout the whole solve, like Netflix special, which you know took me until it was crossed to the point of unambiguity in order for me to understand it was Netflix special, but it didn't really cause any problems in, in the solve at large. Whereas this Rebus chant, I, I should have, what I really should have done here was stop focusing on Rebus and chant. I've really noticed that's a trap I fall into, especially doing these video solves is I find it very difficult to just move past things, um, which is bad because it's teaching you a bad habit if you're if you're in any way learning habits from me, which um, probably shouldn't 
to, to, to great an extent, but I need, I, I should be conscious of that because it is very, very useful when solving really any crossword. I mean, not just the New York Times crossword, but any crossword of any kind, including actually even more so cryptic crosswords to uh, skip to the things that you can fill in because the crosses are, are, are what's going to help you fill in the other things. And here I was thinking, well, I don't, there was no other way to get into this part of the grid. So therefore I should be focusing on these, but I should have thought more about hexahedra and considered, well, just sort of looks and sounds like words I, I do know. So, and, and in fact, I'm sure I do know and have encountered the word hexahedra before, but I just wasn't really willing to, um, move away from this chant and rebus. But anyway, we got, we got there in the end. And that was the Saturday crossword for July 2nd. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, we can discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. And there were actually several. We have five comments here. So uh, sodium chloride explains, speaking of uh, chemicals, sodium chloride explains, summa cum laude means with highest praise. Latin has a strange word order where in many cases, an adjective for a prepositional noun will come before the actual preposition. That is very interesting, and I, I I never learned Latin, but I really should have been able to think summa cum laude with highest praise. The laude obviously is the root of laudatory and laud and that, and, and that sort of word. Um, so oh well, and yes, you can see the sort of summa comes before uh, the with. So that that's interesting. So sort of highest with praise. That that is very different to English, of course, and very different to any language I've encountered. I think not that I'm any kind of linguist. But anyway, let's move on to Long Way to Tipperary, who explains something that utterly <laughs> baffled me during the solve, that Christmas tinsel is referred to as icicles, apparently. But you can also um, buy plastic icicles to put on the tree, uh, which is what that was my guess. Maybe you can buy plastic icicles to put on the tree, but I don't think that's what the clue is referring to. I think it was referring to what Long Way to Tipperary explained initially, which is that tinsel is referred to as icicles. So thank you for that. Any prophet explains regarding sod being uh, used to construct homes on the prairie. My grandmother was born, uh, any prophet explains, my grandmother was born in a sod house in Nebraska. They used sod to build homes because there weren't very many trees there. Uh, and it was the depression. So there we go. That is very interesting. Thank you for that. Sod house. So I, I guess sort of similar to Adobe, I guess. Liam Sullivan explains regarding the psalm of uh, 176 verses. The longest psalm in the Bible is Psalm 119. Its verses are comprised of 22 sections of eight verses each, 22 times eight being 176. And the first word of each verse begins with the same Hebrew letter in each section. I had to look this one up. He acknowledges. Well, so did I. So thank you for that, Liam Sullivan. And finally, Jody B. Uh, confirms the oral stage is the first psychosexual stage of development proposed by Freud which revolves around how adequately a child is fed during the stage, and it usually takes place during the first 18 months of a child's life. Thank you, Jody B. I sort of thought this must be a Freudian thing, and I'm pretty sure it has to do with early child development, but I wasn't confident enough about any of those things to state them, so I'm glad uh, you confirmed that for me. Thank you, Jody B. All right, and that is the five, those are the five comments I had from yesterday's puzzle. So with that, I will draw this video to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle, the video, and I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday puzzle when we return to the themed puzzles for the week and we solve an extra large grid. So I hope you have the time blocked out for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.